What's up, Data Pipeliners? This is Data Engineer One. Welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. In today's episode of How I Write Pipes, we're going to be taking advantage of the pipeline capabilities of the Kedro project. So we're going to be splitting up our pipeline into several different pipelines, the DE pipeline and the DS pipeline, to speed up and optimize the pipeline processing. Uh, we're going to be showing exactly how that helps with data science and how that optimizes data engineering. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Intro song. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separation between the DE portion of the pipeline, which is getting the data, and then the DS portion of the pipeline, which is manipulating the data. Obviously, the, the DE portion here is getting the data from the temperature data and then cleaning this temperature data. So let's grab this guy out. Let's make a brand new pipeline for it. We're going to call it the DE pipeline. I'm going to just paste those nodes in there. And then for this, this other pipeline, we're going to call it the DS pipeline. And then we're going to put those nodes in there too. For our default pipeline, we can still use DE and DS. But let's go ahead and add a DE pipeline separately and then a DS pipeline separately. These keys will correspond to the pipeline names that we can call from the Kedro CLI. So we can actually use the Kedro CLI to choose either the DE or the DS pipeline. Now, once we've actually done that, we should create a catalog entry for the output of the DE pipeline. So we want to be able to save the raw temperature as well as the station temperature. So what we need to do there is we just need to create a catalog entry here. So let's go ahead and make a catalog entry for this guy. And the data that comes back is just in a normal dictionary form, so we can of course use our beloved JSON data set. We'll save the data instead of our raw folder. And then we can also do the same thing with our temperature data. The temperature data, however, comes back as a data frame. So we want to use our Panda CSV data set. We can also save this inside of our raw folder as well. Make sure that we rename this guy because we renamed it as a catalog. And now what we're going to do here is we're separating the DE and DS portion. Now, why did we want to separate these guys in the first place? Well, if you noticed, when we ran the pipeline, it would take a longer time to run this get temp data, right? Uh, it took maybe like, you know, a couple of seconds uh, in order to finish this guy versus uh, running the plotting, the plotting mechanism. And so, of course, this is actually not ideal. If we want to experiment with data, we want to be able to read it and write it as quickly as possible for those fast iterations. So by splitting up the pipeline and creating catalog entries for each of these portions of the DE pipeline, we're able to cache those values, or we're able to save those to disk to make it faster for access by the DS pipeline. So let's go ahead and run the DE pipeline, and I'll show you how fast the DS pipeline runs now. I'm going to do Kedra run pipeline DE, and you can see it does take a little bit of time to run this DE portion of the pipeline. But now that it's done, we have our data located inside of this raw and raw temp, as well as station temperature.csv. So here's the raw temp, and here's our station temperature. Now we can do Kedro run pipeline DS. And now it's super fast because we're no longer going to the web and downloading things. We're actually saving things onto disk and then recalculating them on the fly. By having the DE pipeline be separate from our DS pipeline, it enables us to quickly experiment with the data itself. And so you might be asking, wait a second, if I have to experiment inside of PyCharm, that's actually very slow. Is there another way that we can do this? And yes, of course, we're going back into the fact that Kedro has a great integration with Jupyter Notebook. And so those, the data that we downloaded from those different data sources, we saved them in a catalog entry, which means that that catalog is now accessible by our Jupyter Notebook. So let's go ahead and reload this Jupyter Notebook just to show you that I have no data already prepared. And because we're using a Kedro Jupyter Notebook, we already have access to the catalog. And if we do a catalog.list, you're going to see here we have our station temperature already prepared. So if we do catalog.load and we use that station temperature, we can see all the temperature data for that particular station. And right here, this is where we can begin to experiment with how we want to do that output graph. So for example, I might want to do something like, let's see the average temperature over the hour. So what we need to do is we need to create an hour 
and that can be done uh, by simply cutting the string for the time and then just removing any of the minutes that'll give us an hour and now we can do a group by with a mean and then we can plot that guy boom and here it is the average temperature per hour on this day in singapore we can now do the jupyter notebook convert a second time on this new method of data sciencing so let's go ahead and create this new function which is have temp by hour and now we're just going to add an hour and then we're going to return the plot and the figure from the plot this is going to be a new node and then we can just run our conversion function again after we save this notebook and now that we've overwritten the previous version of the temperature nodes i we now have our average temperature by hour here and so now we can take this average temperature by hour import it into the pipeline we can replace this guy here and now because we separated our pipelines, we have the separation of concerns, we no longer need to wait for the DE portion of the pipeline. We can just directly run the DS portion of the pipeline because we're already saving the data from the DE portion. So we go over here, we type in Kedro run DS, it runs our temp plot, and it's so much faster, and then we can open it up here inside of our reporting. And there it is, the averaging of the temperature for that day. And don't forget, we can also easily change the parameter here. So for example, we're using station S109. What if instead we were to use a different station? So actually we can even use the catalog to grab a station ID. Let's just load the raw temperature data. And here we have a few other station IDs. Let's just go ahead and take S117. Why don't we use that one? We reload this guy here, and then we can do Kedro run. And because we don't have a pipeline specified, it's going to run the default pipeline, which is the DE plus the DS pipeline. We should see the DE pipeline running to, to re-grab the data. And then we have the DS pipeline now running. And so if we look at our temperature graph again, we should have a slightly different curve. And there it is. We see a different curve for the temperature. And it looks like this area of Singapore is a little bit hotter than the previous one. Now, I do want to note that by doing it this way, we have replaced the original data um, asset here. So the raw temp is no longer for the previous station. We replace it by using this. There is a way that we can programmatically generate those different stations. If this video gets enough traction, we can of course apply it again directly to this. So I hope that that's good for you guys. If you've made it this far, make sure you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you wanna know when we are pipelining. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.